But I think one of the things that was really important too is we've gone through sort of the history, what's going on in the community right now. We've heard from an end user um, using it in production um, and you know gotten on board with the path. But uh, what is next in GitOps? And um, you know we do a lot of work um, at Red Hat out in the open and stuff, but there's a bunch of stuff going on too internally. So I thought um, we'd round out today with a talk by CMAC and um, let him talk a little bit about how we're making it happen here at OpenShift in the Red Hat world. So CMAC, introduce yourself um, and rip, let it rip here. Sure thing. Thanks, Dan. Uh, just checking first, does everyone hear me? Am, am I audible? Yep. You're uh, really great. Thanks. I'm, I'm CEO of my side of I've been in Red Hat for quite a long time, beyond 10 years, and I'm part of the product management team at Red Hat within the OpenShift and Hybrid um, Cloud Group. And I want to talk to you about a little bit more of a uh what's next within the GitOps space and, and on OpenShift as a platform specifically? And, and before that, I want to cover a little bit of uh why GitOps in general. I know that uh, you, you heard about this uh, a little bit from uh Christian and and uh Cornelia as well, but I, I want to look at it from a different perspective that we see uh as a recurring pattern with a lot of our customers. And uh, talk a little bit also about why specifically now, why is now a, a GitOps con uh, co-located event and commons and session today? And there are many, many uh, conferences events are happening around GitOps. What's, what's the significance of time here? And then uh, focus more on what's next, what area we'll be pursuing and what we see happening in, in the community. So let's start with what, uh, why GitOps. And, and Cornelia laid out the really uh, well uh, stories of how GitOps is, is born out of the DevOps movement and, and the values and principles of there. And, and I'm not gonna get too much in, into that conversation as, as you've seen. What I wanna point out is that adopting DevOps is difficult and challenging. A lot of organizations are on a journey to adopt DevOps, like the numbers that you hear from analysts are around 60%, 70% of organization that they interview are on that journey. However, uh, one aspect of that difficulty comes from obviously the cultural perspective and dealing with people and shift of mindset. The other aspect, which is expected to be more straightforward, but in practice has, has proven to be quite challenging is to make sense of all of the principles and practices that exist in DevOps. What happens is that most teams, most organizations start with continuous integration, which is uh, kind of a low hanging fruit uh, to, to automate and uh, building the application and releasing applications, some of the aspects of, of, of building and delivering application. And from that point on, it becomes uh, quite difficult to navigate this space and figure out uh, what should be done next, where else they need to go. And this is an area that we see uh, some of the teams, a lot of the teams start to stagnate. They, they, they kind of get stuck beyond that. And it's not clear how to proceed from there. Um, an observation of the situation is also when you look at 100 different teams adopting DevOps practices, even though the practices are the same, the values are the same, you probably see about 100 different ways that DevOps is implemented. So uh, that, that, that brings a lot of flexibility to the teams to find their own path, but also puts a lot of responsibility on those teams to find their own path. A lot of the teams are much more, um, they would have much more success if there's a prescription to start with and, and find their path beyond that point when maturity increases. So that's one aspect of DevOps that has been challenging for a lot of the practitioners. And the, another aspect is that we see a shift of focus from continuous integration to continuous delivery. So like I mentioned, CI is what a lot of the teams start with as, as the first and, and first step of the DevOps journey and low hanging fruit. But as that is tackled in that spectrum of continuous delivery that we defined with, with all the stages that involve from a change going all the way to, to the production, whatever production means for, for that change or application, um, a, a, a shift of focus is happening to that darker blue side of the spectrum on, on deployment, really. How do I actually deliver these things that I have built to those environments with, with simple or advanced scenarios? And uh, as, as a consequence of that, uh, I, I, there, there is a change also on how people speak about uh, these concepts within the DevOps space. The CD 
is really referring to that entirety of the process, regardless of if you mean continuous delivery or continuous deployment. In practice, a lot more over the last uh, year, we, we see CDs used very often to refer just to that deployment, to the actual delivery of, of the things, of the software, not to that entirety of the process. As a consequence of this, a lot of the solutions out there, a lot of projects within the open source or um, commercial solutions coming out, when you hear CD, they often mean that that last model that Cornelia was also talking about. They don't mean that they are an entirety of the platform that, that cover every stages that are every that are involved in application delivery. So with that in mind, with difficulties of navigating the DevOps space because of uh, the high level of abstraction that DevOps talks about these principles and values and the, the shift that is happening among the practitioners that are looking more how to address the deployment part and delivery part of this um, uh, the application delivery uh, uh, process and, and workflows, uh, that has sparked the interest of many teams, many organizations to look for a solution or something that it gives them a lot more uh, prescription than, than, than DevOps as a movement has provided. And that really brings up uh, a lot of these teams to, to land on, uh, on GitOps as a practice. Uh, we have already defined what GitOps is. I'm not gonna get too much into that, but it is truly really a, a blueprint, a concrete way of uh, proceeding with, with DevOps adoption, with implementing some of the practices that uh, are already familiar for many, many organizations. It's really built on the infrastructure as code principle and uh, having version control for all the artifacts and, and configs and everything that is involved in application delivery. So a lot of those aspects are known, they're just not put together in this particular composition that GitOps is, is proposing. And the value, right, the, the advantage at people, the, the, the benefit that are immediately getting from uh, reaching to, uh, looking into the GitOps workflow is that in, in those 100 teams that I talked about, um, if, if they adopt GitOps workflow, all hundreds of them uh, are essentially, the workflow looks pretty similar to each other as uh, uh, Dan also walked us through the Open GitOps initiative and the principles that are coming out. So they are extremely prescriptive in the way that you need to proceed and what, how you should organize your application delivery to adhere to, to the GitOps principles and, and be able to get the benefits that GitOps um, uh, provides. So we, we see GitOps as really one particular blueprint of how DevOps implementation, especially, specifically from the process and technology perspective uh, looks like. It, it doesn't do much, unfortunately, for the cultural aspect. It is a change of mindset, but those challenges of DevOps uh, still remain. So that's really how a, a lot of uh, uh, organizations have landed on uh, on GitOps and, and looking for uh, really how to get out, that, get out of that stagnation that they have experienced within DevOps. But uh, it, it's a valid question that why all of this is happening now? Why am I talking about GitOps to you today and all these events are happening this year? Because if you think about it, GitOps is, as even as, as the phrasing of GitOps is nothing new. Uh, VWork takes all the credit, obviously, for, for coining the word and making um, uh, and, and evangelizing the concepts of GitOps and the Git workflow around it. Uh, however, this happened uh, about five years ago. Right. So what, what is the deal that you're he hearing about this now? And we haven't had so many things happening around GitOps uh, since then. The only, it's only the last 12 months really that, that we see a huge uptake and huge interest from uh, the community and, and the customer base and teams around the GitOps workflow. So uh, where that comes from, Cornelia talked about this a little bit. Containers had to do a lot with it. And more than that, it's really Kubernetes that has uh, changed the, the type of infrastructure that, that teams and organizations deal with. And a, a lot of that is attributed to Kubernetes, but from a certain and particular aspect. So if, if you look at the latest uh, stats that are coming out, this, what you're seeing on the slide is coming from the um, CNCF survey that was conducted in um, 2020. So it's already quite old and, and uh, stale, but it, it does make a point that, that I wanna uh, highlight here is that, 83% uh, of organizations that were surveyed at that point were running Kubernetes in production. The number that had Kubernetes in-house was close to 93 or 95%, if I recall correctly. These are the ones that are running it in production. And this number 
more than 50%, around 50% had more than five clusters. So what they recognized in that survey about two years ago is that the number of teams, organizations that are running two to five clusters in-house is decreasing year over year and number that are running above six clusters and 10 clusters and 50 clusters, that's that's increasing. And what what does that have to do with, with anything? Why, why is that um, correlated to GitHub? So the, the reason for that is really the more clusters customers are dealing with teams or organizations are dealing with, there is more complexity in doing pretty much anything that has to do with, with operations. The operations of the platforms becomes more difficult, Kubernetes itself, if you're dealing with 50 clusters, you're an IT ops team or platform ops team, dealing with 100 clusters, how do you make sure that the network policies across all these clusters are consistent or authentication configuration is consistent or a lot of other aspects of the cluster itself? If you are an SRA engineer, a DevOps engineer, or application developer delivering an application to a subset of those clusters, 20 of those clusters, because your application is distributed geographically, how do you guarantee that the configurations are in seeing the deployments are, are done in a predictable manner and guarantee the deployment succeeds, right? So if we compare this to that traditional way of CI that I mentioned as a low hanging fruit, people put that in their CI, you have a loop in that CI, deploys to 20 clusters, then something goes wrong and, and you're left on your own. The CI is not really doing anything for you if, when something is, is failing after a successful deployment. So, with increasing the number of clusters, there are a lot of complexity that comes with uh, running a lot of uh, operations. There are a lot of simplicity coming along the way as well, because managing s smaller clusters are much easier than managing larger clusters. So there is a reason that organizations are going toward adopting uh, having a large number of clusters. One aspect of it has to do with the maturity of uh, Kubernetes um, adoption organizations that are adopting Kubernetes. Uh, so they're just spreading within the organization more and more teams are onboarded on this platform, more and more applications are onboarded on Kubernetes platforms. On the other hand, uh, it's, it's easier for them to, if you want to, for example, uh, upgrade the nodes of Kubernetes, it's much easier if that cluster has 10 nodes instead of 200 nodes. So there are benefits of having large number of small clusters but there are complexities that get increased in, in how you manage those clusters from a configuration perspective and how uh, you deliver applications to it. So that's something that we see as one of the really main drivers that is pushing a lot of interest toward GitOps as a workflow, especially to start with as a, a, a workflow for managing cluster configuration itself. And after that for deployment of application, application delivery. So this is actually something that um, uh, perhaps sometimes comes as un, as counterintuitive because GitOps, because piggybacking on Git workflows, and that's something that is really uh, absorbed and internalized within the application team, dev teams, um, is sometimes it perceived as something that is only limited to applications and delivering applications. What we're seeing the reality is that most organizations are first and primarily interested in it for, as, as a means of configuration management of clusters and, and delivering changes to those clusters and applications and workflows being only one uh, one of the aspects of uh, what they are managing on, on those clusters. So that's really what we attribute the, the huge growth of interest in GitOps um, and, and both in the community, more projects coming along, more people getting involved in the existing projects, Argo CD and Flux as, as the main um, GitOps related projects and CNCF were mentioned. A lot of contributions and interests are coming toward these projects because of this only like recently and, and a lot of interest and, and inquiries we get at Red Hat. And, and I know that within the community, uh, it reflects the same level of interest. So what is next now for uh, for, for GitOps with, with that in mind, that with that level of interest that exists, uh, where are we going beyond that simple concepts of, uh, so everything is, declarative, you put stuff in Git repo, they are delivered and synced to, uh, to a number of clusters and reconciled to bring those clusters to the state that you have. That, that, that's quite the, like the, the starting step really, but where, where does it go beyond that? So uh, I have included uh, Tecton here as well, OpenShift Pipeline, OpenShift GitOps are the name of the, the product offerings at Red Hat. 
uh, you can replace them in, in my conversation, my uh, my talk with Tecton and Argo CD based on Tecton and Argo CD. And Tecton and Argo CD is a CI's core of uh, CI CD solution that we see across many organizations being adopted. And what they enable across uh, all these organizations is uh, most and for most configuration management, primarily the configuration management for both applications and the clusters, how you can declaratively roll out changes to, to these clusters, to this infrastructure that they have that, that relates to Kubernetes. And I do point out Kubernetes a lot here because uh, like it came up on, on, on chat, GitOps does exist outside the, the Kubernetes um, uh, sphere as well. However, um, de being declarative is, is a requirement for being able to run GitOps processes. Otherwise, you will be shoehorning a lot of uh, the, the principles that GitOps has, and Kubernetes uh, is is the platform that brings that to a lot of type of infrastructure that that customers uh, want and teams adopt. Um, so because of it, we very often talk about it within the in, in the context of Kubernetes, but it's absolutely not limited to that. Application delivery is other aspect. Obviously, we heard a lot of stories today about that. How you have your application as a Helm chart, or you just customize and have. Uh, a, a GitOps engine like Argo CD to deliver that across the cluster that is, is run with very granular control of what should happen across these clusters with deltas depending on the role of the cluster and so on. And infrastructure as code is, is really where all these GitOps principles come from. So any type of infrastructure that can be described as code, then Argo CD is able to um, apply those and, and enable those use cases for, uh, for a GitOps practitioner or a team that adopts uh, uh, GitOps through Argo CD. But where, where does it go from there? What we are seeing is that a lot of other use cases, like when customers reach to this level of um, maturity, there are a lot of other use cases that becomes within sight for, for these customers. And um, I have added a bunch of other products from specifically from Red Hat that I'm familiar with, like Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management, and Ansible. But what I mean here is mostly the capability that these, pro these products provide and any other product or project that have similar capability, they can fulfill the same role within the GitOps workflow. For example, uh, fleet management is as, as you, teams and organization have more and more clusters, it's not just about how I configure this cluster or how I make sure that the network policy that all these clusters have in seen is also about how I can declaratively provision new clusters. I need 10 new clusters with this spec. How can I have that declared in a Git repo and provision those clusters from that Git repo? That's a, com it's a use case at a combination of Argo CD with a fleet management solution or project at Red Hat that is ACM, Advanced Cluster Management that does this, can enable GitOps workflows for fleet management. Then we look at edge cases that is related to IoT, telco, and, and edge, then we have uh, use cases that is like similar to fluid management, but as really a larger scale because you have edge devices that are really tiny, very small compute, and they need to have the ability to bring themselves up to a certain baseline of configuration and workloads when they have connectivity. So that becomes within the reach of GitOps workflows combined with uh, some of the tools that I mentioned. Supply chain security is extremely hot topic this year. I think you'll, you will hear a lot about it across um, uh, the, the, the various journals and conferences. Uh, it's about really bringing more and more aspects of provenance and, and security control and making sure what's being coming out of application delivery workflow, it, it is what it was supposed to do. And there is there are evidence that it is like it's not tampered. And CI and CD is really the heart of what enables supply chain security, bringing integration, uh, integration integrating security tools such as advanced cluster security or any of the other security scanning tools or vulnerability scanning tools that are available within the community or, or commercial side into the CI CD workflow inside a GitOps workflow specifically to enable GitOps for supply chain security. MLOps is, is another aspect. It's, it's not too different really for how how uh, how it's approached for uh, how GitOps is approached for a regular application. But there is huge use cases we see is growing with a lot of our customers for some of the MLOps offering that Red Hat has. Uh, infrastructure as code we talked about, but another aspect that this is expanding to, and we see we, are, we get questions a lot about and expanded on, is 
policy as code and compliance as code. So the same way that configuration and infrastructure should be declared as code, we, we see the desire, a very strong desire from customers to be able to describe their policies, how this platform from, platform should be should look like, not just from a configuration perspective, but also from a prevention and remediation perspective. What is not allowed to be done on these platforms by the developers or by the project admins? And to be able to describe those also declaratively in a syntax that is that can go into Git repos and deliver to those clusters, control and apply to those clusters through the GitOps workflow using Argo CD. So we see GitOps and Argo CD or other GitOps like engines really an enabler at the core of a lot of other use cases that are coming um, uh, in, in the site for uh, organization that, that start this journey and start with the GitOps workflow and get beyond those primary use cases that initially seen as, as the value of GitOps. Um, so what is uh, specifically next for OpenShift GitOps? I talked about a space. I wanted to mention a little bit of what's next uh, in OpenShift GitOps and Argo CD by extension. Like I mentioned, uh, OpenShift GitOps uh, is, is based on Argo CD. Argo CD is the core of it. We are heavily invested in the Argo CD community. Uh, all our engineers work within, within the Argo CD community and, and, and drive uh, the use cases that we see in the enterprise within, within that community. Uh, Multi-tenancy and self-service is, is an important area uh, for us. This is something that um, uh, we hear from a lot of our uh, customers that, that are uh, that that are really after providing internal platform for the application teams, enabling uh, application developers teams to uh, through self-service mechanism be able to 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 implement the GitOps workflow for delivering their application. This is something that you can see in, in different type of DevOps related reports that um, uh, come out. Uh, what comes to my mind is the, the, the famous uh, uh, state of DevOps report from uh, Puppet. And I think it was last year in 2021 that that was one of the aspects and one of the trends that they picked up as well. One of the uh, ingredients of success in DevOps adoption was the platform approach within the organization. A platform approach it is not something that you go by. We talk about OpenShift platform a lot at, at Red Hat. It's, it's not a platform that you go purchase, but rather you build a platform that can expose the services that you allow application teams, developers to consume in the organization in a self-service manner without having to open a ticket or talk to an admin. And this is an ex extremely important aspect for adopting GitOps workflow as well, to, to, to have the ability of a, an application team to decide on their own, uh, provision the, the required infrastructure and be able to consume um, or, or adopt a GitOps workflow for delivering the application. What happens right now with Argo CD is that this is essentially that platform owner giving an instance of Argo CD to, to the application teams. And uh, the consequence of that is that the platform team has to manage hundreds of instances of Argo CD control plane for, for dev teams. So what we want to go toward is a multi-tenancy model that is much closer to Kubernetes and uh, uh, teams can uh, share control plane for using GitOps workflow with a high degree of isolation with it, between the teams without exposing any attack surface or any privileges that uh, Argo CD shouldn't. So we will be working a lot on that aspect and bringing that to um, uh, what a lot of our customers are asking to, to be able to provide Argo CD and GitOps as a service to their dev teams with much lower maintenance and operation overhead that they're experiencing today. Application dependencies and other aspects. So as we see more and more teams are adopting GitOps, uh, they come with more and more complex use cases. We, we already saw from James a great example of how the microservices was laid out with, the, with different Helm charts. And um, often in the microservices world, when you want to deploy an application that is built of many applications, uh, many ser smaller services, then ordering becomes uh, an issue. You, you want the deployment to happen in a certain order to, to make sense for that application. And this is something that um, uh, the GitOps workflow need to be aware of and uh, be able to apply them. This is something that is already possible and uh, highly used uh, within Argo CD in order to uh, control when you're looking at a Git repo in what order those resources or those manifests should be applied 
to the clusters that are being applied. Application dependency talks at one level higher than that, how in which order different Git repos should get applied to, to a cluster to respect the dependency that those components might have between each other. Advanced Helm use cases in another area. Helm is an important component uh, of application packaging. Uh, a lot of Argo CD uh, user base use Helm for, uh, for deploying their application. There are uh, improvements within the GitOps workflow that, that we like to, to exist. Uh, example of that, for example, is the separation of a Helm chart uh, from the values that should be applied to uh, to that chart before deployment to a cluster to be able to have version them separately, lifecycle them separately in different uh, Git repositories. And there are other aspects of Helm that we are looking into making that experience much better than it is today. And last but not least is progressive delivery that 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 relates mostly to OpenShift GitOps already exists within the Argo community as Argo rollout. Uh, progressive delivery points out uh, uh, enabling more advanced deployment scenarios that you Perhaps uh, when you want to roll out a, a deployment from a Git repo to a cluster or to your fleet of clusters, you, you want to perhaps only roll it out to 5% of your fleet and monitor a certain metrics as the success factor of this deployment. If that metric is higher, a certain value pointing out this was a good deployment, uh, application is working well, we can roll it out to 20% of our fleet and expand it from there. If it wasn't a good one, perhaps roll out to the previous revision of this Git repo so that we can get the previous version up. So enabling more advanced workflows uh, uh, within within GitOps, uh, that, that's that's really the target of progressive delivery that uh, we'll be looking at and focusing on OpenShift GitOps. All of these areas, as, as, as you uh, might notice, they're all related to more advanced scenarios when, when teams adopt GitOps. So this is something that we expect that to get, get questioned and ask about more and more uh, as we go out throughout the year. Uh, and with that, I will uh, stop right there.